This episode is sponsored by Apollo, a tool that's helping me to open doors and close deals faster. Wanted to share it with you. Apollo is a complete end-to-end sales platform, letting you email, dial, connect on social, build plays, and schedule meetings. With conversational intelligence transcribing my calls lately and reminding me to act on my next steps to drive deals across the finish line, it's been a lifesaver. It's no wonder Apollo is the most loved sales tool on the planet. Thousands of users rank Apollo as a top tool on G2. Start today completely free and see how Jesse and I use Apollo. Sign up in the show notes below or at thesalesplayers.com forward slash Apollo. That's thesalesplayers.com forward slash A-P-O-L-L-O to start your free trial. And today is the day that we actually launched, both of us used LinkedIn to relaunch the Sales Players podcast and just wanted to give some tips on how we've used LinkedIn. I wanted to ask Jesse how he's used LinkedIn in his sales career on prospecting, reintroducing people into his product and really strategically using the, what is it called when you change careers or? Oh, like uh, the, the, yeah, job updates. The job update and really using that to your fullest because that really is the post that I feel like it will get you a lot more activation. And so you want to strategically use that when you're entering in a new role, maybe not doing that super soon in the role, waiting till you're actually ramped to then let your prospects know that, Hey, I'm ready to sell. And then they can just roll into your DMS and you go from there. There. Yeah. So that's a, a kind of a weird ha- hacky way to, you know, get some impressions on LinkedIn. By the way, this summer, I think it was the LinkedIn algorithm changed. I don't remember all the details and I'm not honestly an expert. There's some people that spend a lot of time trying to figure out exactly how the algorithm in LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever platform works. And I don't spend that much time doing that. I probably should, you know, LinkedIn is a very important tool for sellers And if you can learn how to use it really well, I do think you can actually generate quite a bit of pipeline from it, especially if you're selling into a category that spends time on LinkedIn. My buyer persona for my day role is not, they're on LinkedIn, but they're maybe more on it to update their job uh, or post that they got a new job or something like that. They're not on there necessarily consuming content, but if you're selling to like sales or marketing or sales enablement or revenue ops or whatever it is, those people are going to be on LinkedIn a lot more uh, frequently. So yeah, there's like a few tricks that I've learned over the years and I've been using it for a long time. I remember actually back in, I think it was like 2014 when I was working for a startup in Austin and they were like, we bought everybody a license of something called Sales Navigator. It's a product that LinkedIn's putting out or had put out and it's going to help us like track our prospects better. At the time, everybody just used the CRM and email and phone And that was it. That was prospecting was like email, phone and trying to get, you know, send donuts to somebody's office. I used to do that, like mail a box of donuts to the front office so people could, you know, get your business card. Right. Yeah. I know 2014 wasn't that long ago, but it was 10 years ago now. So that's actually pretty wild to think about. So I think, you know, a couple of things that you can do right away, just uh, quick hits, do this this afternoon after you listen to this episode, go in and change your, uh, you know, your profile picture to one that really shows your face really easily or really well, I should say, because I see a lot of people out there still that have like family pictures in their profile photo, or they have like their dog or I don't know. They're just not uh, a good professional shot. It seems like it really helps to have your face on LinkedIn in a very clear way. People kind of feel like it humanizes you. That's step one. Then going in and kind of filling out the whole top section, there's this whole top section that has a call to action. A lot of people haven't even put one in there. Uh, You can drive that to your company's website. You can build something on your own and drive traffic there that way. Uh, For a long time, I had my personal like portfolio website on there and I actually got quite a bit of traffic just from people looking at my LinkedIn profile and clicking through on that call to action. You know, I added just my Calendly link just straight to that, that, because I just wanted to book meetings. Yeah, Calendly link. Um, I'm going to share actually, just just so when Heck we- Heck yeah. 
on video, people can see what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, maybe one day we, we roll this into like a, a bigger training session or something like that, but yeah, here's, you know, good profile pick has your face on there really humanizes you. I'm actually doing something that I'm actually not optimizing this space and I should be, uh, but this kind of top like header image, I see a lot of people put links to their, you know, put your company's banner in there. Uh, you can put your product link or something in there. That's a huge waste of real estate on my part. And that's mostly because I've been in a transition phase and I'll probably fill that out here very soon. And you can use Canva. Canva has a template for the LinkedIn background. That's a super simple tool to use. I love Canva. It's free uh, and you can do a lot with it. You can build, yeah, images, header images, graphics, all kinds of stuff, invitations. I mean, the, the, the sky's the limit. So a lot of people don't fill out their creator profile either. I don't honestly know if that's accessible to everybody or if you have to reach a certain number of followers to, to get this. But you can see here, my profile says, talks about go-to-market, CRM, SaaS, enterprise sales. I got to choose those. Not sure if everybody gets to do that or not, or if that's like something particular that LinkedIn only offers some people. I would imagine it's available for everybody at this point, but I don't know. Someone uh, reach out, let us know uh, if they know the the answer behind that. And then you can see here, call to action link. This is driving traffic to the sales players community. I need to actually update that. So that's kind of the top real estate section. I had a guest on the show a while back. Um, Raj There's Nathan. your surf. There's your surf uh, little thing there. So okay. yes, I've, I've got surf which is a you know fantastic tool that I'll plug here. They're a sponsor of the podcast, partner of the show. And it makes finding prospects and moving them into your CRM a 60 second thing instead of like five minutes of copying and pasting data over. So get, you know, tell your sales ops team, tell your IT team to install that and go pick it up because it's really a time saver. And since I do use LinkedIn quite a bit for mapping my prospects, the org charts and sourcing, you know, new contacts at my target companies. It's really good to have something like that in place. So scrolling down here, you know, fill out your featured image section or featured resource section. Some updates need to be done here for me, but you know, maybe put something you worked on at your company or anything that you've got. And it, it took me a while to have anything to post here, but you can post a personal website if you've ever been in a blog or video or you've been on a podcast, it's a great place to highlight some of that stuff. And then, you know, as far as posting, this is this is where the algorithm changed this last summer. I think previously a lot of people thought that posting every single day on LinkedIn was the answer. And then something changed with LinkedIn's algorithm where it started to actually, I think, penalize people. And again, someone out there, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like posts were not getting as, as much reach and mm -hmm. so now what I'm hearing is that it's better to just post once or twice or three times a week at max, but having those posts be very well thought out. And I think what, what LinkedIn's probably trying to do is avoid the, this, this um, reality where people could just go into like Bard or chat GPT and say, Hey, create 12 months, you know, create 365 days worth of posts for me on LinkedIn and then I'll post those every single day and, and kind of game the algorithm that way. It's not a great way to, to generate good content. So I think the focus is now kind of more on quality over quantity. Whereas I would say even a year ago, quantity was absolutely the game a lot of people were playing. So Jesse, I want to ask you a question. One thing that I really see on your profile that stands out to me is you have 13K followers. It's like how in connections, how did, how did you do that? I know you've told me in the past, but I think you've, uh, one of our friends, Scott has told you, Scott Lease has told you how he has done that and it seems to be working. So, yeah. So I mean, part of it's kind of like almost compound interest. It's, I would say just, I've been on the platform now for over 10 years, but have used it for business for, for around 10 years. Right. And that compounds, you know, I've worked lots of different jobs, worked at some big companies where I was connecting with a lot of people and that kind of compounds your, your follower count. So then, you know, what Scott Lee is saying, I actually started to do around 2015, sorry, 2017, 
I was in a role where we were trying to network with a bunch of local sales professionals. So I started growing intentionally connecting with people in Austin in sales. And so that grew my, you know, kind of connection base or follower base quite a bit, right? Now the podcast, having that has also driven a lot of people towards my profile and I tend to try to connect. But a few policies I keep is I try to max out the number of people I can connect with every week. And I I will proactively go out and connect. By the way, I also, as a policy, like if I have a discovery call or a demo with somebody, I tend to go and send them an invite and and try to build that connection. And pre or post meeting, both. I I've gotten more wow. I've gotten more aggressive with it. Earlier on in my LinkedIn journey, I'd probably wait till maybe like three calls, you know, two or three calls into like a deal cycle before I'd start connecting with the stakeholders. Now I'll probably send a connection before the first call. And I might even send a little note with it that says something like, you know, hey, Jane, uh, excited to talk to you about our product. Looking forward to the discovery conversation. Let me know if you need anything beforehand. Something like that. Looking forward to meeting. So very short, very simple. And it's just a way to like just connect and grow. So I do that. Mm -hmm. I go out and I actively connect with people in sales that might be interested in hearing about, you know, hearing about the stuff we talk about here on the show. And that's, that's what Scott was saying was you get, I think, 200 connections a week that you can use. So, you, you know, after that, LinkedIn will tell you that you've, you've sent too many connections and you have to wait till next week. I think it's 200. It might be 250, but I, I think would, it's 25, 25 a day. This is 25 a day. I think you're I right. I believe so. I'm not a hundred. No, if, I think you're you right. know, about- let us know, you know, come in, come into the Slack channel and okay. let us know. I think that means you get like a hundred, I guess it's like 125. So it's somewhere between a hundred and 200 people you can connect with every week. I don't remember if Saturdays and Sundays count, but they might. So like, if you're thinking about a business week and you can only connect with 25 people a day for five days a week, that's 125. So uh, yeah, try to use that every single week. And then, you know, just kind of run the math on that. If you can connect with 125 people every single week for 52 weeks of the year, you're going to grow to 6,500. I've got a calculator here. You're going to grow to 6,500 connections, right? And those connections by default become followers, I think, unless they opt out of it. So not a lot of exact science here, guys. I, you know, I know kind of the, the, the themes and concepts. I don't know all the specific details and what the exact rules are, but I don't think it's a bad idea to just get in a habit of connecting with people that are in your buying category, your ICP. So if you're selling to demand gen marketers, why are you not sending a, a, a connection invite out to everyone in your book of business, right? And by the way, my message for that is just something really simple like, hey, Chase, I noticed that you're in demand gen marketing. My product works really well for demand gen marketers. I'm excited. To, you know, I, I help demand gen marketers generate more leads and improve, da, 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 da. Looking forward to being a resource for you. Let me know if I can be helpful. That's it. I don't try to sell anything. I may tease out something, but I'm not selling anything. I'm just saying excited to have you in my network. I, you know, work at a company that helps these type of professionals. Let me know how I can be a resource. That's it. And you play in the long game on LinkedIn because what you don't want to do yeah. is somebody. And then as soon as they accept your connection, say, Hey Chase, it's pitch me. Slap. And I want to, yeah, exactly. Pitch slap. I, yeah. I want to sell you this thing. And can you meet tomorrow? I want to get 15 minutes on your calendar. Like you don't want to do that. I've got this new AI tool. You got to sign up for a 15 minute course. Here's uh, it's $99 today. Sign up. The worst or, is, or, or you want to, do, do you want to be an entrepreneur and own your own insurance agency? Right. Don't you want to be your own insurance agency ownership? I was just about to say, the two worst are the like, do you want to own your own yeah, insurance franchise or uh, we do outsourced IT and development talent? Like that would not even fall in my purview. Like why the hell are you reaching out to me? I, I'm an account executive. Like why do you think I would be responsible for hiring dev staff with all due respect? So those are the, yeah, you don't want to pitch slap somebody. It's a slow and long game and it's, it's really, I do believe LinkedIn despite all of its, you know, many challenges is still a really great place to, to, to grow slowly and really like nurture a network. So try to try to hit that connection goal every week. And then again, connecting with all your prospects that you're working with throughout a deal cycle, just being really thorough about sending them an invite. If you can write a one sentence personalized note, don't keep it, you know, don't make it long, keep it really short, but 
the, the key is like the consistency and it will compound over time. And by the way, I don't really have that many followers. Like there's people out there with like 150,000 followers on LinkedIn. There's people out there even with like 50,000, you know, probably more 200,000 and uh, you know, 13,000 is a lot, but I could probably double or triple this if I was posting more, if uh, I had a, a little bit bigger reach, which is probably why so many people get to that, you know, like hundred thousand, uh, sorry, hundred thousand follower mark is they're just more active on the platform. I've chosen to be a little more quiet on the platform from a posting standpoint, but behind the scenes, I'm trying to connect with my ICP as much as possible. And then of course, anyone who might be a fan of this podcast, I try to connect with them and think of them as kind of the very top of that funnel of how can we reach more people with the show? Has uh, LinkedIn made any sales for you, Jesse? Do you think your profile has caused you to have some money put in your pocket? Yes, uh, it absolutely has. And that's come in a few different flavors. Like it's, it's hard for me to quantify or give attribution for like the deals that I've done in my role as an enterprise account executive. It probably has because I know for a fact that I've connected with some like C-level executives, VP level executives by using LinkedIn. I, um, you know, I've had exchanges with champions and buyers in a deal cycle through LinkedIn. I'm trying to think of a specific deal where I might've reached the sort of decision maker or the person that might've moved that forward through LinkedIn. I'm sure it's happened, but it's really hard for me to quantify that because a lot of the deals that I do and, you know, kind of the SaaS direct deals that I do for my day job is, you know, they come in through different ways and and there's threading and things like that. Now, on the other hand, when it, when we talk about like the the podcast and the the coaching that I do, a hundred percent I can I can attribute quite a bit of money to connecting through LinkedIn with folks that have heard the show or have reached out. And uh, I've actually LinkedIn has been kind of the primary lead gen source for my coaching because I'll have someone land in my DMs. I'll send them a note saying, hey, I'd love to connect. Here's what my coaching program looks like one-to-one. Here's how to get started. Here's the link to, to, you know, to purchase, right? So I can I can point to you know thousands of dollars from just that. And that's like inbound leads. It's people DMing me. So well, the reason why I ask you that is because a lot of the times when I talk to people just face-to-face and they might have a business, they might be a business owner, I ask them, you know, what kind of social media presence do you have? And most of the time they don't, aren't utilizing LinkedIn. They're like, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. A lot of people recently to me have downplayed LinkedIn and I'm like, LinkedIn is gold. I have closed so many deals because of LinkedIn. I'm able to find anybody I want on there. Am I able to go into the companies to find exact targets of who I'm looking to meet? And if you're on the fence right now of should I start a LinkedIn account, just do it. It's it's going to pay dividends. If you do any prospecting with LinkedIn, you have got to go get set up with Surf. That's S-U-R-F-E. It's a tool you can use to add new contacts to your CRM system directly from LinkedIn in seconds. I'm using it every single day. I add contacts, follow my deals, keep track of notes, and it ends up saving me a bunch of time on prospecting and outreach, which means I can spend more time moving my deals along. The data is always 100% accurate since I don't have to copy and paste all the fields over from each and every contact that I want to put in my CRM. Instead, Surf does that all automatically with just one click in about 60 seconds. The team over at Surf has put together a very special offer for fans of sales players there's a link down in the show notes and you can use the promo code JWSurf5. Don't forget the E at the end of surf. That's JWSurf5 for 5% off your first year. Don't spend another minute doing things manually. Go get set up with surf. Yeah. And you do something that that I've always found really interesting, which is you'll thread me into like conversations on LinkedIn. And I actually think it's really effective. Like you'll introduce me to people either, you know, as someone to bring on as a guest or, you know, in the past we've done some consulting projects and things like that together where we threaded people in. So the way that you're using it, I think is actually pretty revolutionary in the sense that like you're, you're DMing people, but you're also like threading other people in to help add value. Like, Hey, I want to introduce you to this person who's going to add value. 
And, uh, you know, here, you guys take it from here. Talk to us a little about how you started doing that or, or how long that's been a part of your playbook. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I, I quote it from a guy named Clay Hicks. He has a, uh, networking group called H7 and he calls this the one to one. And basically it is making a connection to someone else. So connect, serve and ask. So you have a one-to-one, like a one-to-one 15, 30 minute meeting. And during this meeting, you connect, serve and ask. And in the asking phase, you are, or actually in the connecting phase, you are trying to find who do you need connections to? And that's when you're like, Hey, my ICP is X or I need people who are agency owners of dental marketing. So then if you know anybody, then that's when you actually make those connections. So that's how I utilize LinkedIn is I go through my whole connection list. I'm like always thinking of people. And then if I'm like, Hey, Jesse needs to talk to this person, I'll get both of you in a LinkedIn DM message. And then I'll say, Hey, I think that you two need to meet. Uh, I hope this brings you value. This is why I think you should, you two should meet. And it's like a warm introduction. And I feel like that's great karma putting out there. And then as long as you're referring people in a great way Mm -hmm. and adding value, it's just going to compound. And then people will start to refer you back business. I love that you just use the word karma because I use that all the time. I always walk around. I I call it business karma. Like like if you LinkedIn karma. LinkedIn karma, business karma. Like if you introduce someone to someone else, that's a valuable connection for them that then results in them closing a deal or generating a deal or whatever it is, then you're going to, you're going to get that positive business karma. So I think that's really cool that you said that. And yeah, Yeah. it's a great technique and it's, it's helped us definitely get our foot in the door at some different places. You've introduced me to a handful of people that have been guests on the show over the last year. And, um, I'm sure that was hopefully valuable to them as well. So I think it's a, it, that's a cool give that you can offer on the platform. And then also within the DMS, I suggest connecting your Calendly account. They have a widget feature to where you can actually just automatically drop your calendar link in any DMS. Uh, so that can be a really fast way to connect with somebody and book them on a meeting. That's really my goal when I'm prospecting is trying to get that one-to-one meeting. Yeah. No, I think that's, that's great. Uh, I, I've got a, I've got a wrap here, but there's probably more episodes we should do on this because we didn't even touch on like how to organize your sales navigator. Uh, there's, there's using, you know, messaging and some of the tools within the messenger to reach the right people. There's following the the prospects that you're trying to pursue so that you're seeing what they're looking at the company pages. Yeah. Org charts is a tool that I use connecting it all with your CRM, which is, as we mentioned, what surf does, but there's, you know, getting that data into a place where the rest of your company can look at it and help. There's like team link, which is being able to see who on your team is connected. Or if you're maybe the founders of your company are connected to your prospects. Like there's just kind of an endless amount of things we could talk about related to LinkedIn. I know that from talking to our community, this is a, a, a subject of very high interest in, in B2B sales. So we will continue to do some more conversations like this. And Jesse, as we wrap up, how can people connect with us and give us some more of these topics to talk about? Because this came from just one, somebody on LinkedIn that wanted us to talk about this. Yeah, please join our Slack community. And there's going to, we'll put a link in the show notes. There's also a link to it in my LinkedIn profile. So if you happen to be looking at my LinkedIn profile, you can click right through and join. It's free to join. And uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to set up a channel in there that's uh, topic ideas or or episode ideas. And we would love to hear from you, what you want to learn about, what's on your mind this year in 2024 as it relates to B2B sales. We want to talk about it. So start there and, uh, you know, also connect with us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, I'm, I'm on Twitter a fair bit now, but LinkedIn also. And, but I think the main way to connect directly with us in a, in a conversation is probably going to be through that Slack channel. So direct access access all right all right well uh everybody have a great weekend and look forward to you on the next episode of the sales players that's a wrap